Here we'll learn about glomerular filtration, which is the first step in urine formation. To begin, let's start a table and denote that glomerular filtration is the process by which cells and large proteins are removed from renal blood to create ultrafiltrate. It occurs within the renal corpuscle, which is the first part of the nephron. Glomerular filtration is driven by dynamically opposing pressures that are exerted by the contents of the blood and ultrafiltrate. Next, we'll draw the renal corpuscle. Recall that it comprises the glomerular capillaries and Bowman's capsule, also referred to as the glomerular capsule. First, draw the glomerulus, which is a densely looping capillary network. Indicate that the afferent arteriole carries blood to the glomerulus, and the efferent arteriole carries blood away from it. Next, draw the two layers of Bowman's capsule. Show that the visceral layer overlies the glomerulus. We've peeled the visceral layer back to show the capillaries. The parietal layer surrounds the glomerulus more loosely. Label the capsular space, which is the space between the parietal and visceral layers of Bowman's capsule. Indicate that it contains ultrafiltrate. To visualize the creation of ultrafiltrate, let's zoom in on the filtration membrane. Show that it comprises the glomerular capillary wall basement membrane, and visceral layer of Bowman's capsule. The filtration membrane is selectively permeable. Only small and positively charged molecules pass freely. So indicate fenestrations, also referred to as pores, within the endothelium of the capillary wall. Then indicate that the basement membrane is negatively charged. Then show that the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule comprises podocytes, which are epithelial cells that interlock with each other. Podocyte means foot-like. Now let's show the process of filtration across these layers. First indicate some key components of blood within the capillary. Large molecules, such as blood cells, negatively charged molecules, mid-sized molecules, such as proteins, and small molecules, for example, water, wastes, and ions. Show that the capillary wall blocks the largest cells, the basement membrane repels negatively charged molecules, the smaller filtration slits block the mid-sized molecules. Finally, show that the smaller molecules pass freely through each layer and are components of the ultrafiltrate. Denote that glomerulonephritis involves inflammation of the filtration membrane which alters its permeability and inhibits proper filtration, which can be fatal. Signs include the presence of blood or proteins in the urine. Now let's learn how pressures exerted by the blood and ultrafiltrate determine whether filtration will occur. First write that the net filtration pressure describes the outcome of opposing pressures, also referred to as forces, across the filtration membrane. Then define the pressures, also referred to as starling forces, Hydrostatic pressures, P, are the forces that blood and ultrafiltrate fluids exert on the filtration membrane. They push things against the filtration membrane. Oncotic pressures, also referred to as colloid osmotic pressures, are the forces that proteins within the blood and ultrafiltrate exert to draw water towards them. They suck them through the filtration membrane. To visualize these opposing forces, redraw a simplified version of the filtration membrane. Then show that the hydrostatic pressure within the capillary is greater than the hydrostatic pressure within Bowman's capsule. And show that the oncotic pressure within the capillary is greater than the oncotic pressure within the Bowman's capsule because the filtration membrane prevents passage of proteins into Bowman's capsule. Write that high capillary hydrostatic pressure is a major driving force of net filtration pressure in healthy individuals. Elsewhere, we'll learn the clinical importance of the rate of glomerular filtration, the GFR, and how it's regulated. This concludes our diagram.